something interesting happens when people you actually know in the real world find out that you're doing stuff like this. They start giving you broken electronics to tear down and try and fix, which is what this is. Um, buddy at work uh, gave me these two LED uh, RGBW controllers, remote controlled. Um, and he said both of them just stopped working. He couldn't get them working. He tried reprogramming a bunch of other stuff. So he tossed them my way to see what I could do with them. Um, he's already replaced them. So if I manage to just destroy them and tear them down, that's cool with him. Uh, so let's get in them. The first thing I want to do is see what I can find out about them online. So off to the Googler. So here's one of the web pages that sells it. I'm thinking I can't find a company that makes it written on the thing, but uh, part number is SR, and this company is called Sunricher, so maybe it's theirs for real. Anyway, um, it doesn't look like there's much other than what we saw written on the device here. Uh, let's check the specs. There we go. So this one is the RCW. Hmm. Interesting. However, that looks very much like the remote. I'm not seeing the exact receiver here. Um, this one's a 1003 RCW, so that's probably pretty close. It looks... Yeah, that looks about right. Um, but this is the useful information. It uh, operates on 434 megahertz or optionally 868 megahertz. I'm guessing that depends on region. And I'll download the manual and we'll take a look at that too. So here is the manual, 1003 says so right there. Okay, so the button is for learning or pairing with a remote. I'm hoping these are already paired, but it shouldn't be that big a deal. There's how to, how to uh, make it happen. Okay, and that's all there is in the manual. I guess it's a pretty simple product. Okay, after a bunch more searching, I found a slightly better manual. This one's actually 16 pages long. Um, by better, I mean more information, but it's still got a uh, fairly crappy translation on it. But it does show... Um, what all the operating modes and all the buttons are and stuff and how to program it so that's that's useful and there's apparently a couple of different modes there's like a a master slave mode um, you can have them you can put the receivers on multiple different uh, um, channels uh, when you program it and whatnot um, and various different uh, various different operating modes so if we can get the thing working, I'll uh, run through some of those. And if not, well, don't suppose it matters, does it? Uh-huh. So RF control, um, probably, well, I'm not sure which of those frequencies they're actually using. Uh, presumably the one that's legal for North America. I'm assuming he didn't import it from offshore and buy a European one, but whatever. doesn't really matter. Um... I guess the next thing to do is to hook them up and uh, give them a give them a try. So I'll spare you watching me screwing around, and we'll just come back once I've got it hooked up. All right, I couldn't find two LED strips, so I had to just invent uh, something here. So I've got 12 volts coming out of UL power supply. That's promising. We'll flash when I power them on. So now then, let's power the remote on, and so 
that one blinks. Okay, so it's receiving. That's good. Not sure what's happening with this one. Hmm. It did flash though, so it's getting power. I'll just shut it off and turn it back on. You see those flash? So, and this one seems to be receiving. Okay. So, oh, this one. I don't know whether you can see it or not. This little button here seems to be jammed down. Wondering if he was in there before he gave it to me. Let's see if that does anything. So that one's still responding. This one isn't. Um, according to the manual, that's the programming switch. So push that. Push that. Huh. Wonder where the LED went. Uh, so this one's sort of messed up. It's still not creating any output um, other than when you power it on. This one's not doing a damn thing. So I'm going to tear into this one first and just see what it has to say for itself. Uh, there's no screws visible, but it appears to be spudgerable. So we'll do that. And... Ah... The wires are in the way. Okay. Let's throw that back out of the way. What do we got here? Uh, there's, oh, the LED was just bent. So I'm guessing he was in there uh, before he gave it to me. Just taking a peek around. Let's see what happens now. We turn it on. Those still flash. Okay, so that does go into programming mode. So go into programming mode and tell it to be number one. <gasps> Something's happening over there. You see that? I don't know what I've done, but that one seems to be working now. Holy shit. it on that one's not responding but it's doing something this one here still isn't doing anything um, let me just bring the tail of this in here This one's not responding at all. What's going on? I'm going to try reprogramming it again to be number one. It blinked a few times. Okay, they're both responding. So this is a little touch sensor thing in here for a color wheel. Wonder how I got that one. It stopped working now. Some bitch. Okay, so I'm going to program that one to be one as well. And all of a sudden this one's working. Doing something. Huh. Don't know what. I don't know why that one's not doing anything. But I, I programmed that one just now. And this one started working. When I programmed this one. So I programmed that one as one, I think. Let's program this one as two. Blink, 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 blink. 
it's still working. Oh, it's not doing anything. What the hell? Huh. I'm going to have to go back to that manual. Like mean, it's, it's doing that, which is fine. None of which is what I'm actually telling it to do. But that one is responding when I push this. This one isn't. It's sort of responding. I'm pushing the red button here and it flickers. It's like it's trying to do something. This is weird. Wow, there's something really screwy with this, but we know that the output section works. Um, there's something weird in the remote control world. So, uh, rather than waste more time on this, I'm just going to dig into what's actually in here. Uh, do the teardown type O video. Because um, it looks like the only real problem with them is software somehow. So, actually, let's pry that out of its little case thingy here. So, what we got here is looks like four little boards with what I'm guessing are MOSFETs on there. Let's see if we can zoom in closer. And flip it over. STN 442D. Okay, let's just go and look that up. And for a change, I'm going to do this slightly differently. Uh, I don't know, let's see if you like it or not. So here's the data sheet, STN442D. Zoom in a little tighter here, I guess. And it is, in fact, an N channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Um, and what's the other important thing here? Uh, there we go. 20 amp uh, current handling. Okay, so that's uh, useful information. And does that jive with this? Uh, it says current out 4 by 5 amps. So those are well underrated. I mean, they're using... Uh, they don't have much of a heat sink on there. Focus on this. No. Focus there. There we go. Uh, so for heat sinking, they're basically using some copper on the board and some uh, vias onto copper on the back. So it's got some amount of heat sinking on it. Other than that, we've got a zero ohm resistor, a couple other teeny little resistors there. Um, and what is that? 1142px. Hmm. Probably not a resistor with a number like that. Oh, wait. Does that say diode? Yeah, that's a diode of some kind. I'm not going to bother looking it up then. Um... But, okay, so there's the MOSFET boards, and we know they work because we saw the LEDs light up. Um, and then off the MOSFET boards, we've got some traces, which I'm going to guess are probably the gate. Some nice light ones down there um, coming off the gate, which is up in the top right corner here. Uh, down through the bottom. And I'm going to guess those are the gates... You go down through some through holes, and hmm, just judging by the proximity of things, it probably shows up at that little chip there. Okay, well, let's find out what that chip is, I guess. Maybe it'll tell us something interesting. Uh, 7407? Hmm, that's like a TTL chip of some kind. 
Let me go find the data sheet. Okay, the 7407 is a hex buffer. So basically, uh, one in out, in out, in out, in out. Uh, let me. Where's the next page of this? Okay, so basically the A's are the inputs and the Y's are the outputs. Uh, supply voltage, uh, 7 volts. Um, input voltage, output voltage. Oh wow, okay. So it can handle, it, it can tolerate seeing 15 volts at the output without breaking, but uh, normally it would be uh, it shouldn't be above the rail seven volts right uh, okay so that little hex buffer is keeping the uh, or keeping the gate of this guy isolated from the little microcontroller which is clearly what that is down under its little crystal there and Ooh, let's zoom in and see if we can see what he is. Pull that crystal up out of the way. That would be some kind of goo on there to prevent us from looking at it. Right. Okay. Uh, what else is going on on here? Here we have clearly the RF board, which is plugged on. Let's see if we can see what that chip is on there. Again, cheesy bastards. Numbers completely obliterated, no idea what it is. And that's all that's going on on there except for, where are we here, a oh, 10 meg crystal. And an antenna and an assortment of capacitors and inductors. Okay, so there's the RF board. What else have we got going on here? Let's into that capacitor. Oh, look, an inductor, which means some kind of uh, power supply thing going on here. What are you? AX3007. Okay, there's another data sheet to look up. AX3007 is 150 kilohertz 2 amp PWM buck DC to DC converter. Okay. Adjustable output voltage 150 kilohertz fixed frequency, etc., etc. Well, bugger can pass two amps. Wow. And there's the guts of it. Where's the sample? Uh, hmm. Okay, here we go. I found a full uh, example schematic in further on in the data sheet. I had to go and download the PDF. So, voltage in couple of capacitors, a big one for uh, for keeping the big bumps out and a little one for keeping the little bumps out into the VCC. Um, the switch output goes through an inductor like that inductor there um, and then a couple of parallel capacitors again one for general smoothing and one for taking the little spikes off and a voltage divider goes back into the feedback input. That's fairly straightforward. Standard little switching power supply. And that looks an awful lot like what they've done here, if you would focus. Thank you. Um, got a big capacitor on the input side and some small capacitors. Yeah, I can't get in there. Where's my less zoomy magnifying glass? There we go. Uh, it's got 
some smaller capacitors down there beside it and then a larger one on the output and some smaller ones down beside him somewhere in there okay so that's pretty much textbook for that so that's creating one of the power supply voltages inside um, not the not the main power that uh, drives the MOSFETs so and out to the LEDs that is coming just straight off the input connector there and there is the two polarities uh, this one on the bottom of the board is the two outer pins which is the positives which means this is going to be the negatives and that just runs right back onto these board onto these daughter boards here that's that strip there and there's the positive underneath jumps up onto it and there is the switched output to the to the LEDs hmm what else do we see going on on this board here what's that hello 78L5. Ah, that's just a little regulator. So that's 5 volts. So that's likely going to be the logic uh, voltage. Uh, probably powering that and this guy over here. Okay. So, I'm guessing that the problem with this thing, well, I'm 99% sure the problem with this thing is inside this brain box here, probably software related. So, nothing I can do about that. That's way out of my wheelhouse. But while we're in here, let's get into this remote controller and see what makes it tick. Get out, batteries! Arr. Come on, why are you being so tough? There we go. So what do I see? I see a screw there. And, oh, there's a couple little screws down in there. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this little sc screwdriver. I realize that in the UK it's just a pound shop screwdriver. Uh, but it's, I can see why, uh, why Clive and David Watts and a few other people use them beyond the fact that they're cheap. It's pretty convenient. Now then, get a spudger in. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, open. This thing isn't very... Ah, oh, there we go. Isn't very spudger friendly. They're tight clips that are holding it together. But I think... Ha, ah, I win. Oh, that's interesting. The keypad isn't the usual resistive keypad. That's just little hard things that push. These are little clicky dome switches. That's cool. What do we got under here? Okay, so we got an RF module hanging off, kind of like the other one did, except... Ah! Yeah, they didn't put a socket in there. They just soldered the header straight on there. So it's sitting at a bit of an angle. That's kind of lame. So we've got another little microcontroller there. Um, this is probably to do with power handling down here. Let's see if we can see what that is. Not a clue. Oh, I thought I saw a little bit of ink or something on there. No, they scrubbed her clean. And these guys are probably just power supply bits and pieces. Uh, let's see if we can see. There's actually two chips doing thinking up here. So where's my bigger zoom? Oh, scrubbed her clean. How about this one? Oh, 
what's that? Is that the corner of a logo or something? Let me just get my eyes in here instead of using the camera. That looks vaguely like ST microcontrollers kind of logo, but the rest of it's all ground off or acid washed or whatever the hell they do to keep their secrets. So, not much to be gained there, but that's presumably, since that's pretty much the same chip as is on this side, I'm going to guess that's the microcontroller. And this one up here, stop that. This one up here, you see these little tracks going out from it in a sort of a clock circle around? That I'm going to get guess is the touch sensor, controller, decoder, brain box. What will probably communicate serially over to here. And then there'll be a serial line, I'm guessing, running up to the little transmitter. Oh, not even a chip. It's just a blob. Man, these guys don't want to find out their ancient Chinese secrets. Anyone to find out their ancient Chinese secrets, do they? Oh well, that's an interesting thing to rip into anyways. I guess I'll put it back together and uh, and send it back to my buddy if he wants to try and dick with the software. That's, that's way out of uh, my comfort zone software stuff, but otherwise, um, I suppose, is there anything really worth salvaging on here? A couple of caps, maybe. Um, those RF boards, if we had a vague idea of what they did, you might be able to use them, but might be able to track the pin out from them or something. Actually, let's uh, zoom in on that a little bit carefully, a little bit closer again. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple of tracks running from there straight into pins of that microcontroller, so you could probably trace down I'm going to guess those are likely data lines. I don't know. I suppose a person could chase that down a little bit more carefully if they wanted to. What are their Is there any other salvage value in here? Maybe those crystals? Yeah, there are a dime a dozen, though. Uh, the MOSFETs? Never hurts to have a handful of MOSFETs kicking around. I don't know. It's an, it's an interesting thing. So, thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to my buddy Bartek for uh, giving me this thing to rip into and uh, see what I can do with it. Um, I guess that's all for this week. I will talk to you later.